G'day, I'm Sid Whiting and I'm the producer of the Grey Nomad 101 Caravanning Made Easy DVD series. Now this video clip isn't about caravanning, but there is one thing that a lot of caravanners like to do and that's go fishing. To be a successful fisherman in Australia, particularly if you want to fish off the beaches, you need to know how to handle, how to, how to handle a surf rod, a long beach rod, and how to cast it properly. It's my observations and experience that about 9 out of 10 people using rods like this on the beach aren't getting the full potential out of them. And some of them really haven't got a clue. So that's what I'm here to tell you today is how to actually use one of these beach rods to get the best results. Now, who am I to be telling you how to use a beach rod? Well, you have to be built like a refrigerator, like a, a rugby quarterback to really get the most out of a beach rod, right? Well, not quite. Look at me. Five foot six, built like a wimp. I'm such a skinny little runt, the slightest breeze would blow me over. And yet, back in the 90s, the mid 90s, for three years running, back to back, I was the state tournament casting champion. It's like some of these little guys can hit a golf ball out of sight. I can cast a fishing rod a country mile. And it's all about the setup and the technique and all that. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. Three sections to this. First, we'll have a look at the equipment that we use. Nothing too fancy, but we'll, we'll just break it down for you. Then we'll have a look at the setup. Once again, just like a golf shot, you've got to get yourself set properly. Then, uh, then you're ready to do a proper cast. And then finally, at the very end, we'll get into the actual technique of the cast. So I hope you find it interesting. Most people I speak to on the beach, five minutes with them, and I put 10 or 15 metres on their cast just like that. So you, you don't have to be particularly clever. It's not rocket science. There's a couple of things you need to know. Now, before we get into the equipment, just a quick word on the actual casting style that we're going to be showing you today. There are some fairly specialised techniques for really maximising your distance that involve sideways or non-linear actions, if you like. So, for instance, if I was casting directly away from the camera, you can have it so that your, your, your rod is right back here your sinker or your rig is right back there and then you swing it around the side and really whack it. There's an even more interesting technique called the pendulum technique whereas once again if I'm casting away from the camera you actually swing the weight this way and then that way and it goes right up in the air and then you go whack and they really go. There's a number of reasons why we won't be showing you any of those techniques today. <laughs> Five reasons actually. First of all safety safety at a demonstration area like this if they break off and you've got no control over which direction it goes and sometimes they can fly you know four ounces of lead flying for about 400 yards a bit dangerous secondly safety once again safety and consideration for those around you when you actually get out there on the beach do you run, do you really want to be swinging your rod around like that with three or four ounces of lead on the end when there's a whole row of other guys standing on each side of you not a good idea once again thirdly with those sort of techniques, you generally need to have a shock leader, meaning a length of heavy line going all the way from your rig right up to the tip and all the way down the rod and two or three turns on your reel. That's a lot of mucking around. Uh, not just, you don't want to do that with normal, everyday beach fishing where you're tying rigs on and off all the time. Fourthly, reliability. That sort of specialised roundhouse or pendulum technique, you need to practice and practice and practice and even then you can get into a lot of trouble. And finally, accuracy. Once again, anything that involves a sideways swing, you've got to time the release perfectly, or it can go one side or the other. Take out half a dozen lines, you know, when you're all, everyone's standing there catching Taylor or something, and some turkey comes along and casts over all the lines and tangles them all. Not popular. The sort of casting that we'll be showing you starts off, once again, casting away from the camera. The whole setup will be in line, the sinker, the rod, everything will be pointing back and then it will be coming over and in line with the camera. That way you've got your accuracy pretty much guaranteed and it's reliable. It's got everything going for it, especially if you're not into casting much and you really want to just get out there and do it without getting too fancy. What we're talking about is known as inline level line casting. The inline, I've already explained that, everything's in line with the direction you want it to go. Level line means whatever line you've got on your reel will go all the way through to your rig, which is 
typical of when you go fishing. In the competitions, the tournament casting, we used to call it dry casting because it's a bit like this. We do it on an oval somewhere. It would need to be a very large oval for safety reasons. Uh, we would use like 18, 19 foot graphite rod, even longer than this one. Eight pound line onto a four ounce sinker and we cast 170, 175 plus meters without breaking off. Because of the technique I'm about to show you, it's very smooth, it's very reliable and it works and it's very effective. So now let's get straight into the equipment side of things. Three major parts to the equipment. No brainer. You've got a rod, you've got a reel, and we've got the line. We'll get onto those other two in a minute, but first of all, the rod. You need to have your rod ideally matched to the weight that you're casting. If you're just flicking out a pilchard, weighs about one ounce, you need a, a very lightweight rod. Uh, if you're fishing heavy surf conditions, where you need a four or five ounce sinker, then you obviously need a, a much heavier rod. Does that mean you've got to carry away, carry around two or three different rods? That's what we used to do in the good old days. These days with technology, uh, with one piece rods aren't really that popular anymore because you can get very good three piece, two piece rods, multi-section that don't break at the joins anymore. This particular one I've got is a three-piece rod, but it comes in five pieces because the, the top section, there are three options. You've got a light, medium and heavy weight tip, if you like. So that can give you different rod strengths for different rig weights without having to carry around three different wad, rods. Um, pretty expensive option too. This is a South African one. I forget what it's called. Poseidon, that's right. There's a couple of brands. There's this one and, and another one I forget. Three, four hundred dollars. A lot of money but it all packs up into that tube very convenient and you do need to protect a rod like this carry it around in a protective tube the last thing you want is to have an esky <laughs> get dropped right through it and there goes your 400 hundred dollar rod so so much for rods oh the only other thing a couple of things runners you don't need a great big tip runner i've done a lot of experimentation with small medium and large uh, tip runner Stripping guide, that's the tip runner up the other end. Stripping guide. Uh, there used to be a school of thought that because of the line coming off the spool, you need to have a nice big stripping guide here. Actually, you get better distance with a small one, I've found. Uh, the sooner you get that looping line down and in a straight line, the better. The less wind resistance or air resistance you have if you do it that way. The other thing, very important, your winch mount. Once we start putting the reel on this, you'll see what I mean. This is a low winch mount rod. You can get rods with the winch mount. Well, I should call it a reel mount, not a winch mount, because you shouldn't winch your fish in. You use the rod to do the work, don't you? Anyway, the reel mount up high. Uh, and it's your choice. You can have it so that your, your reel is comfortably down here. That's where I like it. Even spinning reels, egg beaters, doesn't matter. I like to have them down here. Or you can have the reel right up here. More on that in a minute. Just beware the rods that have a sort of a halfway reel mount about here, because there's a tendency for people to think, well, the reel has to be in the top when you cast, and so they, they've got their hands fairly close together like that. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but you don't do that. You put the, if you've got a low or medium reel mount, you always have the reel on your bottom hand, your forward hand, and your other hand right above it. We'll show you that with a reel in a second. Talking about reels, let's go and put one on. Now, it doesn't matter what sort of reel you're using, the principles are the same. Whether you're using a heavy duty side cast Alfie type reel like this, or just a normal spinning reel, or even the overhead sort of reel, the principles that I'm about to explain are identical. This, except for the overhead reel with the drum type reel. That, that is a little bit different in that it doesn't really matter so much how full the spool is, but with your other normal side cast or spinning reels, the fuller the spool, the better. Okay, if you've got a half empty spool, there's a lot of resistance as the line is dragged over that lip, that'll cost you distance on your cast. You don't need heavy line. If you're just fishing for Taylor or Tommy Ruff or something like that, there's no point in having 20 pound line on that. Once again, will greatly reduce your casting distance. I don't fish with more than about 10 pounds normally in the surf, unless I'm expecting to catch jewies or something like that. Then I'll go up to 18 pound and that's it. If you have your, your spool too full, that can lead to tangles. So generally about you know, a couple of millimetres below the lip is the, is the ideal there, okay? 
Okay, back with the rod, let's whack the reel on. As I mentioned before, I prefer the low winch mount, reel mount option. They always call it a winch mount, but that's wrong, it's a reel mount. There you go. And I'll thread her up in a minute and put a, a rig on, but before I do, let's just have a look at the basic uh, position, if you like, the stance. So if I'm casting that way across the camera, I will generally stand, if I'm going to stand stationary without moving my feet, about 45 degrees on with my feet, shoulder width apart. My hands will be about a shoulder width apart, maybe a bit more. You need to generate leverage because that's what using a beach rod is all about. It's not about swinging it like a pole. If that was the case, they'd be made of solid wood. No, they're flexible. They're meant to whip and they're meant to be loaded up a little bit like a bow and arrow. And the idea is to get enough leverage to load it up and have it bent so that the sinker is right back here somewhere, the rod is bent, and then you, poof, you stop, you hang on, and let the rod do the work and whip it through. In order to generate that leverage, it's no good casting like that or like that. You'll never, you, know, you can't swing it. And if you do, you're not going to get any power. Comfortably apart, and the idea is you start with your hands high. It's no good trying to cast with your hands down here. Once again, no power. Both arms high and straight. There's a tendency, because you want to look over your shoulder, some people think they've got their arms up here, but it's still down here. If anything, when you're practicing, look under your arm, and that will get you with your arm right up here. The rod down as low as you can without the sinker getting tangled up in the ground. We'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. And then the idea is, it's a bit like a golf swing. Legs, hips, body, shoulder, everything rotates. Not directly over the top. You can do your back in that way. Just a little bit of an angle, a comfortable angle. And I'll do it from this way so you can see it as well. So it'll be like that. Now here's the probably the number one tip to really improving your distance. Most people when they cast, even if they're doing everything right there, they'll get to here about the one o'clock position and that's where they stop and give up. That is where I actually start. Not quite true. I start off very slowly and gently. If you start off too quick, you can jerk, you can break it off. A lot of break-offs, you know when you break off, it goes poof and lands in the surf about three feet <laughs> off the sand. That's because you've actually broken off right back here and it's just flipped up in the air. Get it going smoothly, a bit like a golf swing. And then once it's up around the top somewhere where most people start to give up, that is when you really hammer it two things you do. One is you punch out with your top arm. And the other thing is you pull into your side with the bottom one. All right? It's like a karate punch. Hey it's exactly the same principle. You've got all your whole body tensioned up, all rotating into it, and so you get this effect at the end. You hear that whip? In fact, I used to practice this with an empty rod just like this for half an hour at a time. Just practice that last foot of movement. Oh, this is a fairly stiff rod, I can't get much action out of it. And I'm getting old, I'm no spring chicken anymore. And then you combine those together into this. All right. If you practice that, that alone will greatly improve your cast. Okay. That's that. You can even yell out like a, they call it a key eye in karate. <laughs> if you do that, if you get it moving smoothly first, then you hit it as hard as you like at the end. Even with quite light line, you won't break off. I promise. Okay. Oh, I'm breathless just doing that. Now we're going to rig her up and show you a few more tricks. Okay, I've just threaded it through all the runners. I'm just going to tie a big spoon sinker on this. Spit on the knot. Why did I do that? I'll show you why in a minute. You see, when you're fishing or casting, the place that it most usually breaks off, if it breaks off, is at the knot. And there's a tendency to say, ah, oh, that was bad luck. It's not luck at all. 
And there's a reason why things break at the knot. Oh, let me start again. So I'll spit on the knot. And test it. Don't jerk it, because that, that'll break even 20 pound line if you jerk it. Give it a good test. You don't want it breaking off. Now, why did I spit on my knot? Well, if you don't know, it's because of a little thing called friction. I'll give you a demo of what I'm talking about. This will blow you away if you haven't seen it before. Okay, there's that knot that I just tied on that hook. I'm using 60 pound nylon trace. It's so strong, you could get a bloke leaning on each end of that. There's just no way you can break it. It's pretty strong stuff. I'm just gonna hook that hook into a table there. I've got a rag here. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna hold it, pull it very tight, just enough to keep the, the line straight. I've got a bit of a rag. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a rub. Just for a couple of seconds. What's that? It's broken through very, very quickly in just a few short seconds. Let me zoom in on that now. And we'll see what's going on. That line anyway is melted melted through so just with a little bit of friction for a few seconds with a rag was enough to completely destroy that 60 pound line wet your knots pull them up slowly very important all right getting ready to cast first thing set your drag so it's not so loose it'll slip as you cast don't forget to loosen it up a bit once you're in the water. You don't want a big fish to come and scream out to sea with your drag set on full, it'll just break it off. All right, I'll worry about the other end of the rod in a minute. But what I'm gonna do now, is because this is a low reel mount, I'm gonna take the line with my bottom hand, my front hand, and there we go. And my setup will be like that. Now you notice a couple of things here, first of all, I see a lot of people still doing this. They think they've got to have the reel under the rod to cast. No, no, no. All that'll do is break your wrist. Reel on top, okay? Also notice that I've got the line coming off at right angles from the spool. If you have it up here somewhere, it's gonna come tumbling off the spool or you have to hold it onto the rod to stop it from slipping. Don't do that, have it coming straight off the spool at right angles. Then you don't actually have to grip it onto the rod. It's just anchored there with your finger, as long as you've got the drag set tight enough. And then you're all set to go. Arms high. I've shown you the action already. And in a second, we will do the whole cast from a couple of different angles so you can see it in action. First of all, let's look at the other end. How far do you have it hanging down or how far do you wind it up? See, a lot of people wind it right up to the tip. You see that, you know? Let me show you something. I'm gonna demonstrate this with just the, uh, the end of the rod tip. So, imagine this is a 14, 15, 16 foot beach rod. And you have to have a long rod, by the way, for beach fishing, not just because they give you a longer distance cast, you also need that height to keep the line above the waves. And that's another reason you can't do these fancy roundhouse or pendulum style casts. They're, they're really suited for rods of about 11, 12 feet long. I've seen guys try it with 15 footers and have their rod shatter in about three pieces. Puts too much strain on. But all right, so here's the idea. You start the cast, it loads it up in the bend, you bring it through, then you wait, the rod unloads, boom, until it reaches the slack position. At that point, the rig or sinker, whatever, will sail past the tip. I change hands, <laughs> gets to the other side, and then the line straightens up again, and then it will continue on its merry way. Now, at some stage, you have to release your finger and release the line and allow it to continue on its merry way. When should you do that? All right, let's say you do it while the, light is, while the rod is still loaded. What's that gonna do? it's gonna release all that energy into thin air and not into the sinker. And so you're gonna lose distance and get a sore finger with that fully tensioned line scraping off your fingertip. Mm. And it'll make a swishing sound. You ever see guys on the beach go swish when they cast? And they think that's pretty impressive. That's actually a lousy cast because you've wasted energy. Mm. 
Now, what happens if you wait too long and the sinker's gone all the way past the tip out the other side and you're still hanging on to it, what's going to happen then? It's going to rip it out of your finger. Sore finger and because you've held on to it a bit, you've lost distance on your cast. So, obviously, the best time to release is somewhere between there and there. That's what I call the, the fly-through phase, if you like, or the release phase. Anywhere in there, when you release it, there'll be no tension on your finger, you won't get a sore finger, and you haven't slowed the cast up any by hanging on to it too long. You haven't lost energy by allowing the rod to release into thin air. Now, let's just modify things a little, so that now, instead of having that much drop, we've now got it wound right up to the tip. Now, how much time have you got now to time that release between there and there? Like a fraction of a millisecond. The sinker's going over 100 mile an hour and you're trying to judge that release. You're never going to get it right. And that is why, unless you absolutely have to because you've got rocks behind you and all this sort of stuff, do not wind it right up to the tip. In fact, most of the time on the beach, we recommend having a long drop all the way down to your stripping guide, like this. And you see that very long drop. And that will give you a very smooth cast because you've got all that time, all that distance for the sinker to fly through in which to judge your release. And that will give you much better results. Now, there's only one problem with that. If I'm trying to set up a cast, I've got, I can't get the rod back past the horizontal without the line going slack. And that's no good. You don't start off a cast with a slack line. What to do? Have a shorter drop? Maybe. If you're on the beach, all we do, generally, is lay it out behind. I'll, I'll do it in this direction so you can possibly see it better, but you get the idea. So we lay it out behind us on the beach, and then you can get the rod tip right down near the sand. And then you start off slowly, and then whack it. And that's how we do that. There is another option. Watch out for this because you're starting to get into slingshot style like a, a mini pendulum cast. You can lay it towards you like that. Once again, get the full rod swing. And that means as you cast, the, rod, the sinker is flying right around the top like a slingshot. You find you get a lot more break-offs that way until you practice a bit. But uh, the other thing you might strike is when you're on a rock wall somewhere, you simply haven't got room behind you to uh, have such a long drop like that, it gets tangled up with all the rocks. That's a situation where you might need to wind it up closer to the tip, because generally off a rock wall you're not going for maximum distance anyway. If you are, once again you can try this mini pendulum technique, where you swing it in towards you, swing it in towards you like that, and then you can drop your rod tip, and then you can cast. It's, uh, I'm not going to try and demonstrate it too much here, that's just something for you to think about if, if you ever get to that stage. All right, let's chuck a couple down there, see how we go. Try one away from the camera first. Lay it out behind. Here we go. Arms high, arms, hands apart, reel up, right angles to the reel. It's all happening. I generally like to take a couple of little steps just to make sure the line is dragging behind and tensioned and isn't slack as I take off. Here we go. That's gone a good 150 there, I wasn't even trying. Did you notice the lack of a swishing sound? A good cast is a very low pitched whoo, okay? If you hear a swish, then I've wasted energy by releasing too soon. If you're practicing this in a park, of course, safety first, make sure there's no one around and no buildings close by that you can go crashing through their windows with. Uh, and I'd recommend to start with, rather than lay it out behind you on the ground like that, start off with the rod horizontal and just get used to, to that. Now let's just go with another couple of full blown casts. Okay. Ha! And I'm going to stop that. And you might have noticed that that looked like a very easy, effortless action. And it is really, you're just using your body weight to just get it all going, get that rod loaded up. All right.
right, let's have one last go. Keeping in mind, when I say make sure there's no one around, for about 250 to 300 yards, because if you break off in full swing, the sinker can actually go twice the distance of a normal cast. It really can be quite dangerous. I haven't been trying up till now, because I haven't done this for years, to be honest with you, but I'm going to really have a crack at this. I paced, I paced the last one out, it went about 150. So I'm going to really have a crack at this and let it go the full distance. Yeah! It's four ounces of lead. Wow. <laughs> That's gone right over the back. <laughs> and uh, it went right over that rock wall at the back there. Well over 150. Uh, if you're practicing, I'd suggest using a, a nice, large, relatively lightweight wooden blob that doesn't dig in all the time when it lands. So there you have it. So just remember those few little pointers, wet your knots, nice long drop for a smooth release, hands comfortably apart to get good leverage, start off slow and steady so you don't jerk it and break off, and then really hammer it, that karate punch finish at the end. Arms nice and high so that then you can pull down and really generate the leverage. And don't fish with line any heavier than you really need because that'll really restrict your casting distance. Make sure your line's nice and full, your, your spool nice and full. <laughs>